Recently, we reviewed the Clake One Light Clutch, which a few of the guys bought last year. A clutch that is incredibly light, but doesn't use any extra travel to achieve that lightness. I was sufficiently impressed to check out the Clake range myself, and opted for the Clake 2. A very trick bit of engineering that is essentially a combined light clutch and hand operated rear brake setup, which I've used for several months now. So how does it work? The inside lever is the clutch and it uses the same technology as the Clake One Light Clutch to give you effortless one finger control. But if you use the outer lever, this applies the rear brake. The really brilliant part is that as you squeeze further, the clutch is also pulled in, which in effect means you are far less likely to stall the bike. About a year ago I got rid of my Recluse Auto Clutch, as for my purposes it was cheating. I wasn't developing my clutch skills at all. The beauty of the Clake 2 is that I still have full use of the clutch with that exceptionally light pull and heaps of feel, but can still make use of its anti-stall nature. And for anyone who has ridden a bicycle, the hand operated rear brake is extremely intuitive and only takes a few minutes to get used to. The dual hand lever design is a work of art. Some riders opt for keeping fingers on both levers at all times, but I've settled on the one finger and just moving it slightly to either lever as it suits. It's surprising how quickly this becomes second nature. First up, I quickly noticed how my finger had far more control over the rear brake than my clumsy foot in boots. Down steep hills, I now rarely lock up the rear wheel, so I'm using more rear brake than before. And of course, this meant that rear brake chatter became largely a thing of the past. Also, I didn't realize how much influence body positioning had over the old rear brake. As you move your body backwards and forwards over the bike, this makes it harder to modulate the rear brake. This really stands out on steep downhills. As it gets steeper, it gets harder to operate that rear brake, but the Clake 2 allows perfect rear brake control, regardless of how steep or gnarly the terrain is. Coming into right-hand corners, I can now have my foot off the peg for balance, but still operate the rear brake. In fact, I started to notice how often I couldn't really use the rear brake before. When stuck on a steep hill climb, I can now U-turn the bike to the left if needed, as I can still operate the rear brake. And when doing pivot turns in very tight sections, I can now just upend the bike and spin it around on its rear wheel. Also, when I'm off the bike and moving it around in rough ground, it's much easier to use the rear brake now. I've even found it makes loading and unloading the bike easier. Getting into more advanced techniques, the Clake 2 really starts to shine. When lifting the front wheel up, it's so much easier to cover the rear brake with one finger to prevent flipping over. Personally, I'm not into those slide in sideways and power out of corners, but can see how the Clake 2 would make those so easy for right hand corners. The Clake 2 is adjustable at the lever and also has a range of cams for almost infinite adjustment. You can basically control how much the clutch and rear brake overlap, if at all, how quickly they engage, and the degree of pressure on the lever needed to engage the boat. Apparently some riders opt not to run the old foot lever for the brake at all, but there is the option to retain this so you can swap between hand and foot operated rear brake if wanted. So what are the issues? Well, it's definitely expensive, although roughly on par with the Recluse Auto Clutch. Virtually all the clake parts are machined in-house and not outsourced to maintain perfect quality control. However, the good news for overseas buyers at least is the Australian dollar is finally dropping. And the clake products are built to last and can be transferred to your next bike regardless of whether it's a trials, motocross, enduro or road bike. So personally I'm just looking at this as a long term investment in better riding. When using the outer lever you could lock up the rear wheel by mistake if grabbing a big handful of clutch in a moment of panic. In the early days this happened but I quickly found it became second nature to just pull it in halfway for the clutch then the rest of the way for the rear brake. 
even when things were getting out of control. If the use of two levers sounds a bit daunting or complex, I should also mention Clake offer an extremely similar setup called the Pro Lever. It works the same way but just dispenses with the separate clutch lever. However, you can just slide a lever across while riding which drops out the rear brake and just leaves you with the light clutch. Quake has kindly offered to swap the levers across as I'd like to review that pro lever and I'll put a video up soon. So all in all, extremely impressed with this Quake 2. If you're thinking of a recluse auto clutch but can't help feel you're cheating, this is a great alternative. You still have full manual control of your clutch, but its easy, intuitive feel and anti-stall nature will make a massive difference to your riding.